and I would absolutely love for you to share your questions as we go along at the end of the session. I will absolutely would love to address them. Um, so yeah, let's begin. My name is Eugenia Oliverti and I am an international pleasure and intimacy coach. I am super excited to be here today with you and I'm really, really honored to be sharing with you my knowledge that I have acquired along the year, um, through the years of me exploring sexuality and working in sexuality space. Uh, I believe that pleasure, intimacy, love will save the world and um, will make a world a better place because ultimately all of us are looking for love looking for intimacy, looking for that true connection, yet so many of us are absolutely scared of it. And pleasure comes directly into this space where we become resistant of pleasure because our conditioning is actually, um, says otherwise, it's like so many uh, teachings like say that we have to suffer in this life to get um, to heaven you know and and yeah all kinds of things but I'm here to tell you that we live only once and we live and our experience of pleasure is absolutely necessary so um, a little bit about me. I am here in Bali today. So guys, where are you from? I can see that we have got London, we have got Himalayas, um, we have got, uh, okay, Meghalaya. Wow, so we are really, really international uh, group here. So please uh, yeah, share with me where you are in the world. I would absolutely love to see where, where you guys are tuning in from and thank you so much for being here. So a little bit about myself and how did actually I come to do this work. So uh, how the session gonna go? It will be about an hour, an hour and a half session depending on like how many questions we have at the end. And I will, um, I will be going through some slides that I have prepared in advance so that it's a little bit more clear what are we talking about, what is um, actually going on. And if you have got any questions along the way, please put them in the chat box. And as we get to the end of the session, we will absolutely address them, the questions. So you may ask me, it's like, Eugenia, how did you even started working in the space of sexuality? Um, how did you become a uh, pleasure and intimacy coach? And the answer is very easy to that. Um, as I was growing up, um, my parents have, um, have been alcoholics and uh, domestic violence have been an everyday reality for me. So the first uh, kind of experience of what's supposed to be love have been very disturbed for me. Um, when I was growing up, I, I was looking for love and I was looking to escape my home and create my own family, which is like full of love. But somehow I ended up in relationships with a man who are exact copy of my father. And in fact, I got married to one and it was so freaky that even when he was laughing, it was resembling my father. Um, nothing's wrong with that. It, uh, that marriage didn't last long and uh, I got divorced. But then uh, along the way, I've been in more relationships. More of them have been violent. More of them have been really destructive. And at one point I looked back and seen it's like all of my relationship looks somewhat the same. What is going on here? Maybe it's not them because I've been very quick to blame. Uh, maybe it was me. And in fact, what was going wrong was that not only a relationship have been very violent and uh, destructive, but also the sex life have been really 
unhealthy and um, I couldn't understand what was happening. Um, the orgasms, the, 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 way, the way sexuality worked, I've been bullied for sexuality in school and it always didn't make sense to me why people are so aggressive about sexuality and sexual self-expression. So uh, I actually got to the place where I couldn't um, return anymore. Like my father died and uh, in that moment, what happened was, it was four years ago. And in that moment, my uh, world kind of didn't change at all. In fact, I couldn't feel anything. And I was like, I'm surely supposed to feel something here. Uh, but in fact, I couldn't feel anything. But um, a month later, my, um, my emotions just got out of hand and I spent like three days completely hysterical on the floor, crying and having all the memories coming up for me where I was not able to handle myself at all. So that has been the indication for me. Somehow I've decided to take control of this situation and I found uh, some workshops in London and I really went for it. So and when I went for it, my healing journey has begun, begun and my spiritual awakening has happened. So my life made sense to me. And since then I started exploring the ways of where I can actually better my life, where I can heal the aspects of myself that didn't work. And I've been on this journey for the past four years and I have acquired so many skills and tools that have helped me to create the life of my dreams right now that I'm sharing those skills and tools with my clients that I work with privately. I work with clients in the groups, big and small, in person and online. And right now I'm super excited to be actually uh, to, to have this opportunity to share with you what I have learned uh, throughout these years and what I see that works for my clients where they have created an incredible life for themselves full of love, full of intimate connections where they learn how to pleasure not only women but where they pleasure themselves. And I'm talking about men that I'm working with, right? Because I work with men and women. So, um, without um, further ado, I think that um, I would like to begin this session and actually address the first point because here at today we'll be sharing a few points about what I feel that is the core of pleasure because pleasure comes, pleasure is available to all of us but not all of us can actually accept it, receive it, or give it because of various things, right? But where pleasure actually starts, um, let me just share my screen with you. So here it is. So pleasure actually starts with desire because all of us have desires. What actually is desire? Desire is something that keeps you awake at night. It's something that doesn't you, uh, it, something that wakes you up in the morning, something that pulls you towards your uh, mission or your, your unexplainable situations. You know, it doesn't have logic, it doesn't have, um, explanation very often and i think that all of us here uh, once upon a time in their life have for example fancied their uh friend's girlfriend or boyfriend and you know we logically know that this is not a good thing to do we logically know that this isn't like it's unacceptable in a ways you know but nevertheless the desire is there and it doesn't make sense and you know that this is not like kind of a good thing to do you know but still in the same time you just cannot help yourself 
and some people do act on that and some people don't right but there is your choice already what you do with that but so many of us having the unhealthy relationship with their desire because we are programmed to suppress our desires because um we are taught very often that desire leads us to something completely wrong completely um you know uh, guilty pleasure you know and stuff like that so i can tell you the more we resist our desires in our life the more when desire like comes up in your body and it's like oh my god i really want that and you push it down and you push it down and you push it down and you don't allow yourself to express that so then many people have a drink you know uh go out and then like you know all the barriers are down and then you go wild and next day you wake up and it's like oh my god what did i do you know and it's like complete and you binge 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 on that on that desire because it's like it was sitting inside of you for so long that when it when she comes out you just like go completely crazy so how how can you create a healthy relationship with your desire? Well, you know, it's a, it's a really, um, pro it's a really interesting process. It's a really interesting process. And I will be sharing, sharing you with, sharing with you how you can deal with that. So, we all have created beliefs about sex and pleasure and first you create your beliefs and then your beliefs create you and this is something that i see in my work all the time in fact i've seen that in myself like uh men want to use me for sex and like um uh, for guys, it's like a very different kind of beliefs, but um, you know that it's like not safe to express myself. It's not safe to say what I want. It's not safe uh, like to, okay, I worked with somebody that have had a belief system that women are doing sex, having sex as a chore right that it's actually disrespectful to have sex with women um i had a lover where his belief was that uh blowjob is disrespectful to women um i had lovers and clients who had really um limiting beliefs about sex and sexual se self-expression and pleasure and actually uh, because once you create those beliefs you go through life looking for evidence of those beliefs so never mind when desire arises in you your belief system says it's like hey it's not safe <laughs> you can't be doing this you know and and um everything very often finishes there or when you go against your belief system then there very often is the belief that you get punished for um having pleasure and in fact i worked with somebody who went against uh, their belief system and as the next day uh, this person had so much fun flirted and really had like a incredible experience like sexual experience and the next day while was walking uh, the leg just snapped and uh, there was immense amount of pain in the leg and when we started getting down into what is the message in that pain it was that it's a punishment for having fun so you know your body and your subconscious mind is creating uh, your reality and you most of the time don't even know about that right so so then we have our role models of love and intimacy right and role models usually are our parents or people who are acting um, in um, 
in the way of our parents, right? It could be grandparents or, or carers. So what examples have you seen at home of uh, love and intimacy and lovemaking? In fact, you know, was it a normal thing? Would you just like openly talk about sex or sexuality? Or was it something that is a taboo and you don't talk about and you don't uh, ask questions? Like for me personally, I have been, I've been told that I was found in the cabbage as a young girl. So imagine uh, my <laughs> conversations with my parents about sex and how kids are born were like pretty much non-existent. I had like a little book that said that kids were found in the cabbage when I was asking my parents where I come from. And uh, that was that was that and all i seen at home personally was seeing my parents arguing and uh, actually my father always demanding sex from my mother so and i i didn't understand what was going on as a young child but it made sense to me that it's like well they're doing that uh, and my mom is unhappy so something is not completely right here so uh, so yeah, what what have been your role models in your uh, life in sex, sexuality, love, and intimacy? Right. Um, actually, I just want to say that I don't see any questions right now, but I'm going to pick them up at the end of the slideshow. And you know, if... Uh, in, in case I forget, you can also book a call with me, like a private call with me to actually discuss in more depth what could be potentially stopping you from um, experiencing more love and pleasure and intimacy. So I'm going to be sharing the link with you at the end of this session. Right, so let's go to the next slide. Masculine energy. And again, it comes to the example. What is the, your example of masculine energy? And what masculine energy even means to you? Because there is so much confusion. I often um, uh, interact with my clients who are caught up in their unhealthy masculine you know where you have to control everything where you have to uh uh you know it's it's powered by ego but ego in a way that ego overtakes everything you know it's like nothing like in my opinion nothing is wrong with having an ego because ego is there for a reason also ego is there to guide us and protect us and actually um, it has got a very important function uh, however when the ego overtakes your life that becomes a problem like for example like when you go through um, something like really difficult in your life and you need help and support of others however your ego doesn't allow you to reach out for help that there is a problem and there is a problem not only for you but for people around you who want to support you who want to help you who love you and who, who want to be there for you but in fact very often our ego doesn't uh, allow to reach out for help it's like yes i can do it by myself i can do this on my own you know, I'm weak if I'm asking for help. Can anyone relate to that? I can, uh, I see very often uh, my male clients actually dealing with that. And in fact, I was working with um, one of my clients who had a belief system actually that said that he has to do it on his own, that he has to do it by himself. So like, for example, um when he would um like do something like first of all 
his belief system was saying to him that he has to overachieve all the time that he if he sits down that he's lazy if he is um not doing something that he's lazy the belief system was really like um crazy on that and actually he was always on the go and having severe back pain like severe back pain because all the time he felt unsupported in his adventures and in behaviors and imagine this uh doing some work always feeling alone never been able to ask for help very often he would run himself into the ground i mean to to the point that he was um incapable to move and imagine can you have much pleasure can you do <laughs> a lot of like um sexual experiences when you in that situation i don't think so and even then um and even then uh being intimate with his partner with his lover he felt that he cannot receive you see so his masculine energy was like so overdriven and overpowering that he had to be in control of everything and he could not even accept help and like to the point that it's like for him to ask for anything it was an absolute no go um right let's move further so feminine energy very often um pleasing a woman actually is so much more uh than you know than just having sex with her but also you know i just want to be clear that masculine energy and feminine energy all of us have got both of those energies within them and uh when they in balance you can actually create a very beautiful experience um with your lover because first of all i will tell you that for women having sex more most often is more than just act of two bodies getting together doing their thing and then separating um for women and conscious men that i know and that i teach actually sexual experience starts from the first time you actually start talking to each other or like from the first time you experience this desire in your body where you just like oh my god you know like this aliveness in your body where you feel like wow i just really am curious about this person and what it would be like to feel their skin and and connect with them in this more intimate level you know and many of us think about sex all the time and i'm one of those people right and i actually um love it i absolutely love it so however having sex um with a woman is more than just act and performance right so it's all the emotions that are coming with that and you guys you also have those emotions in you and i will tell you that ability for a man to hold space for a woman for her emotions to come out are actually exactly directly correlated to your ability to handle your own emotions so if you align with your emotions if you actually accept your emotions as they come as they come in up for you you know like whether that's anger whether that's rage whether that's uh you know love or or you know care for somebody when that this, that comes up for you and you are receptive of those emotions within yourself and you don't try to make yourself wrong for this or you don't try to make yourself uh you know guilty of having those emotions or 
uh, make yourself be weak because like this is what we thought in the past that hey you know if you're a man men don't cry boys don't cry if you are a man you have to suck it up and just power through you know if you are living your life in that um in, in that in that sensation i mean there is no much space that you can provide for the woman to open her heart to you and actually be vulnerable with you and share what's on her heart so that you would feel comfortable to handle that um and there are so many men that are actually incapable to hold space for a woman and this is where the separation happens you know where she wants to tell you how she feels and you like oh my god i can't deal with this this is too much for me right now you know it's uh so and there becomes separation then she's like oh my god you never got time for me you never listen to me and it's like well you always like trying to drag me down or something like that you know so there is a massive massive uh misalignment in like where you are at and where she is at and i mean how can you create like a passionate incredible love making when you know when there is an argument and misalignment that she feels unheard and misunderstood and you feel overwhelmed and you know and it doesn't work it doesn't work so actually for you guys to find in the acceptance of your own emotions and connecting with your own feminine energy actually will allow you to connect with women and and be that um, solid ground for their feminine to come out and play with you right and in fact i will tell you that i've heard um and i'm gonna uh, quote um john wineland that i really love and what he said was that uh, in the moments when you are raging and angry you are in your prime feminine and i couldn't agree more it's like the anger the 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 rage it just blows you so wild that you're not in control of yourself and this is exactly what feminine energy is it's just like completely out of control it's wild it's destroying it's creating at the same time you know and and for you to learn <laughs> how to manage that when you get angry you actually in your wild feminine right um so yeah it's it's bizarre and and it's yet so beautiful so maybe you you can start paying attention to your emotions and be more truthful with yourself about the way you feel in a different situations all right next is boundaries and oh my god so boundaries is one single the most important topic that i throughout my career and my um intimacy exploration have learned right um because like last year i was running workshops in sun and moon festival and i've been uh, doing the boundaries workshop boundaries and communication and i can tell you that i had about a group of 20 people men and women and almost like maybe one or two didn't say that but like almost all the all the group have said that one single the hardest thing for them to say is a no and i can tell you saying like setting your boundaries about what is acceptable for you what isn't acceptable for you where are you at you know um 
without having the fear of hurting other people's feelings because we are so conditioned about saying um you know to to take responsibility for other people's feelings right and this is again um massive um uh, uh, learning for myself and my clients because it's not so easy to say no because like are you being a good person when you say no to people are you being like but this is selfish to say no but this is selfish right uh and i come across a lot of that it's like one of my clients daniel he literally could not say no to people he could not say no. And what, what would happen, he would say yes, and then he would struggle. And then he would like drag himself. And then, and then he would start resenting people for actually asking him something. But the truth is, you always have a choice to say yes or no. And it's okay, right? We all entitled to that choice. And uh, I can tell you, it is super important. It's like another thing. When you say yes to things that you have no intention of delivering, this actually takes away from ability to trust you. When you say yes to something and you don't fulfill your promise, uh, your word is literally like doesn't have any substance to it doesn't mean anything doesn't mean nothing and you know i will tell you now one thing that for a woman to be able to orgasm and let go and be vulnerable and intimate with you and like completely surrender to you to be able to trust you is the most important thing this is why i have said earlier that uh you know sex starts when you look into each other's eyes when you start the conversation when you start the flirts and when desire arises because everything that prior leads to the experience of actually connecting with your bodies everything plays a part in your experience when you have that um connection of your bodies because i can tell you if you if you tell me all the time uh one thing but never fulfilling it i cannot trust you and my orgasm is so precious how am i supposed to trust you with my orgasm if i cannot trust you with anything else an orgasm is the most precious thing that i have if i give you my orgasm i give you my everything in a way you know so if i cannot trust you like with you saying that you're gonna call me uh and you don't if you're gonna meet me and you don't if you're saying that you're gonna um do something and you don't do it and then you don't even mention or act that that it didn't happen or like something like that you know how am i supposed to trust you with my orgasm it doesn't make sense right so yeah i would really love to invite you to look at your integrity with yourself and set healthy boundaries that you know that feel true to you and feel true to your lover and there is always the next part which is communication and this is something that is super super important because um communication can be very uncomfortable especially when you got to um open open something that maybe it's not very pleasant like conversation about boundaries because not many people even talk about boundaries because not many people even have boundaries or don't have boundaries they know about i mean i grew up in a family where my mother used to walk in into into the bathroom when every time when i was having a bath you know 
there was no privacy, there was no boundaries. People just didn't respect my boundaries. When I said, don't come in, she would always come in. And, you know, I grew up thinking that this is the way world operates and like kind of allowing people to overstep my boundaries. When I say no, they still do it and I still take it and I still take it. And then it's like, comes to the point when I can't take no more. And in communication is again is being heard or unheard and it's like are you communicating things in in the time of when the something arises for you or you are holding shit back basically and like until you can't take no more and then like uh literally like create an argument it's like what is what is the way of being for you here you know, because like everything that we have um, discovered so far is essentially based on communication, is essentially based on how do you communicate yourself, it's how do you acknowledge your desire within yourself through describing it, through communication, right? How do you share your desire through communication? How do you actually acknowledge what is happening um, within you and what belief systems you have through communication it's like uh how do you speak up your boundaries communication everything is based on communication and like uh i can tell you the sooner you will learn to express yourself in a way that is authentic and true to you and feels that uh, you are like it's also very important to put um energy behind it it's like is it powered by love is it powered by anger is it powered by confusion you know and it's like really paying attention the intention of your communication um because so many people actually miscommunicate and very important part of communication is listening this is the massive massive part of communication right um okay next is anatomy of woman's pleasure oh my god so we actually have never learned in school or anywhere else unless you have been um, curious about sexuality and been taking independent courses about women and how women's pleasure actually operates. Like, because women's body and, wo and men's body are very, very different things. Like, very, they, they operate in a very different way. And I mean, for women, all of her body is erogenous all of it you know the way she has uh the, the the pleasure arises in her body is completely different to a man and what do we do very often like because for men uh the the man the main place uh for the turn on is his penis right so it's like you you feel the desire you get hard and it's like oh wow this is like great you know and what many men do when they in in bed with women they go for her pussy immediately and i mean she's not ready for that like she's not ready for that her body operates in a different way you know, she needs to warm up. She needs to get hot and sizzling, right? It's like, it's not something that you can just like, yeah, let's go, let's dive in. No, she's not ready. She's just simply not ready. And, and you know, sometimes, you know, the, the, the connection before can get her ready that she will be like, yeah, let's go for it. But most of the time, you know, woman needs a bit of time. So uh, actually exploring her body and what does that body communicates to you is really, really important, right? And it's not about like being rushed into your experience. It's not about like being, you know, um, 
basically don't treat her as a guy. Don't treat her body as your own body. Treat her as a woman's body. And that's really important. And trust me, she'll reward you. <laughs> yes. Right. And then we have endurance and performance. Oh my God. I have worked with so many men who are actually terrified of performance. And it's like, oh my God, what if I'm going to fail? because there is so much pressure. There is so much pressure having to perform. I have worked with so many men who are actually uh, struggling with their endurance. They're struggling with their endurance, like premature ejaculation is something that is really common for so many. And most of the time, they're really healthy men, very young, healthy men. And what happens here, again, it's all in your head. Get out of your head. All I got to say, get into your body. Start feeling, feeling, right? And by feeling, I mean not only emotions, but start feeling your body. Start feeling what your body loves. Start feeling what your body is trying to tell you, not what you think you should be doing, but what feels good for you to do. Because I can tell you that um, boundaries of pleasure is actually like another like incredible thing where you actually can practice the, the role plays like in a way that it's like you allowing things to be done to you or you taking things from her but of course everything it has to be consensual absolutely consensual so when you learn how to frame how to use your masculine energy to create to create the frame for your sexual experience to be like mind blowing. You will go wild in that frame, right? It's like imagine that you have like a painting and you just put the frame on it and you just start splashing the colors. And this is like your experience, right? It's like colorful and bright and wild and, and creative and, and sweaty and like whatever you want it to be, right? So, yeah, so endurance and performance, guys, get out of your head, get into your body, because once you get stuck here, down there, the game is over. I've seen so many men actually being stuck in their heads so much that, 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 <laughs> they cannot stop blaming themselves it creates guilt it creates shame you know it creates like um resentment a lot a lot of very low vibrational emotions and come on you can so easily change this around and like i said you know if if any of this resonates with you i would absolutely love to invite you to um to book a call with me and we can absolutely discover what is that holding you back in your in your uh, journey of becoming an incredible lover because like hey i'm here to create more pleasure more intimacy and more connection in this world right but meanwhile let's go to the next slide so yeah which is actually this is how you can book a session with me uh, and i will actually post that on the group chat so guys if you have got any question i'm just going to stop sharing the uh, screen now and what do you think that this made any re um, resonance how do you feel about about what i've just shared with you i mean um let me just put the link for the call here for you. But in my 
exploration of pleasure and intimacy this is what i have discovered that you know those those aspects are actually the main the main aspects that create an incredible pleasure and intimacy and there are so many practices that you can do there are so many um you know experiences that you can have but then again if you have weak boundaries if you have weak communication or you actually not really sure exactly what is that you want yourself and things are a bit vague um the chances are that you know your love making going to be incredible every single time is like very weak and this is what i actually have seen throughout this um um advertisement of this of this um uh, webinar that lots of men are responding it's like oh i i just go in and i just brace myself and i just hope for the best but imagine what it would be like if you don't have to hope for the best but if you would know that you are the best how would that look like how would that feel like to you when you would go into the sexual experience with your lover you know whether it's a long term partner spouse or girlfriend or whether that's a one night stand or somebody you just met and you would know that it's like hey baby don't worry i got you you know and it's like i will give you so much pleasure that that you know i gonna rock your world and saying that not out of the the you know ego place but actually be very humble about it it's like i'm going in this experience wholeheartedly because i want to share this experience with you i want to share this pleasure with you i want to i want you know experience your body and i want you to experience mine and uh, i know that lots of people lots of men and as well as women love to fuck and of course like nothing's wrong with that it's each to their own however there is so much more to pleasure and sex than fucking right and once you allow yourself to actually feel the feelings in your body and and really connect to your body you can connect to so um incredible energies out there while having pleasure you know and it's like in my experience like making love is the best meditation that is out there our orgasms are so healing to our mind our body our spirit you know we create a connection in our bodies you know with people around us when we just like had the great sex you know the next day you go to uh you know work and you just greet everybody with the spring in your step it's fun it's incredible you know it like having good sex not only sex but incredible sex have created such a massive difference in your life and the life of other people like sex it's like a glue of the relationship sex is something that keeps you safe in your body it boosts up your immune system and hey come on right now it's super important right and and it also reduces your stress levels and and levels of anxiety but i'm not talking about unhealthy relationship with sex i'm talking about your relationship with sex where you completely conscious and aware and 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 willing to connect not only with yourself but your lover and i can tell you this experiences of um of my clients where you know i had i had this client of mine when we've met he had a fear of dying alone 
and this is essentially what what um, actually brought me to this work because I have witnessed my father being so unhappy uh, that he died alone. He literally created cancer in his body because he felt like he cannot speak to anybody. He felt like nobody understands him. And, and I'm in this mission to create a long lasting positive change in the world. I'm here to create more love, more connection and more intimacy. So yeah, I can tell you this client, when he came to me, he had a massive fear of dying alone. Um, so he was single for like eight years, having like absolute uh, horrific time even approaching a woman and talking to a woman. So when we started working together and we actually worked by this structure, right? We worked uh, following exactly the um, um, tools I've just shared with you. And nine months later, he started dating. Actually, seven months later, he started dating this incredible woman. It's been over a year now. It's like a year and a half, maybe slightly more. He is actually planning a wedding with her, right? So I can tell you, these are the magic, magic uh, pointers for you to up-level your love, love life, your pleasure, your intimacy, and show up not only in your bedroom in a different way, but show up in the world in a different way. Because just imagine to be able to say yes and no to people who are sometimes take advantage of you. Sometimes, you know, you feel like you cannot uh, refuse somebody in something. Imagine to be able to say no to those people and be humble about it without any spite in yourself. That would be pretty powerful, right? Imagine that it's like when somebody like demands for you to promise them something and you really don't want to because you have no intention fulfilling that. Uh, and just to say no and making sure that you have kept your integrity. How powerful would that be? And I mean, how much more self-trust and self-respect you would create? How much more sexual experiences that are blowing your partner's, your lover's like mind you can have, knowing that she trusts you, knowing that she can trust you with her orgasm. That is pretty powerful stuff right here, right? So guys, do you have any questions? You can type the questions in the chat box and I would absolutely love for you to answer. Also, please feel free to book your calls now. I'm actually having a um, online course coming up and I can tell you about it. Uh, and it's actually called Incredible Lover, Becoming an Incredible Lover. And it's actually um, based on all of these teachings, but I can tell you all about it if you would like me to. So uh, you're so welcome. Thank you so much, Eugenia. And please tell me, I would love to know, has this been helpful to you? Has this been helpful? This, did this make sense to you? Or were you expecting more like a technique kind of session where I will be sharing? <laughs> Your live sharing is worth waiting for till 1.30 a.m. Oh, thank you so much. Well, it's actually 5 a.m for me right now. Excellent content. Amazing. Amazing. I'm so happy that it has made sense and it has actually resonated with you and you have received it well. But yeah, also like guys, if you would love to dive deeper into this, um, yeah, please, please book a call. Let's discuss what is possible for you because you know, everyone is unique and everyone have got 
um, unique challenges in their life and perhaps more than one, you know, but we can always start with one, uncovering one challenge and what gets in the way of you becoming that incredible lover and that, that man that is so proud to look at himself in the mirror. And I'm not saying that you're not, but imagine like be even more in alignment with yourself. It's just, it's just incredible. You know, it is just incredible. And I would absolutely love to get to know you better and really see um, what difference we can create, you know, what we can uncover there. And by the way, just to let you know, this session, uh, this call is absolutely free. So yeah, um, so it is 2.30 a.m. in the mountains. Wow, this is amazing. So the question, are women of different cultures behave different influenced by their cultures? So, you know, fantastic question. And I can tell you that um, I'm holding um, space for groups of women from all over the world, like um, Arabic background, you know, Asian background, European, American, from all over the world. And I can tell you that majority of um, challenges and conditioning and, and behavior is exactly the same. The, the challenges that women are going through from a variety of backgrounds are pretty much identical, you know, and so is for men also. It's like um, some cultural differences, of course, make a difference in terms of like, you know, um, a woman from Arabic background would have like a slightly different uh, challenges in her everyday life than women from European background. However, the, what, happening, what is happening internally is pretty much the same. And also the way to adjust that is pretty much the same, you know? So it's, yeah, yeah, it's very similar, very similar. Does this answer your question? Beautiful. So do you have any more questions? Do women always look for father like husbands? Um, you know, not always, no. And actually, what happens? <laughs> We are, we are actually like magnets, right? Getting pulled towards each other. So what, what happens is whatever you need and want, even like with you understanding that consciously, subconsciously you have a magnet that is familiar with one way of being. And most, in most cases, this is the way of being you have modeled from your parents, right? And it's like, what is acceptable or non-acceptable? So did she. So when you unaware of what is happening uh, in your subconscious mind, in your belief system, your magnets are actually operating on the frequency of those of those um attraction because you attract what is um what is familiar to you right so you create those experiences uh whether those very unhealthy like in my case it used to be in the past very unhealthy or you create um very healthy so and very healthy, actually, you can clear your subconscious mind of those belief systems and those, um, and 
those experiences that you have had in the past that have affected the way you feel about um, about sex and intimacy all your past lovers or somebody said something you know that you made it mean something about yourself or your self-expression and and you started operating on that level so you stop attracting the women who are you know not very uh how would i want to say this who are not what you actually looking for you know what i mean so do they always look for their father figure the answer is no not always but it also depends on how conscious the woman is and what is her like belief system about pleasure and intimacy and men says right does this answer your question Okay, so women who have been abused in the past are more fragile and need more care to heal, right? Do they have mental block? How can it be cleared? So I can tell you that women who have been abused uh, not always are more fragile, actually, because like I, I've been abused in the past and actually in fact it made me so much stronger but stronger in the way that i was like ha don't come to me you know it's like don't even think to get close to me so when you actually see um a woman who is slightly defensive or doesn't allow you too close to her or like takes her distance that this is an indication maybe that she doesn't feel safe and this is again for you to take the lead to connect with your feminine energy so that you are more in touch with your emotions so that you can hold space for her to show her emotions because unless you are you know being vulnerable with her you know i don't think that she would feel very vulnerable she would be able to feel very vulnerable with you and do they have mental block well some do and some don't and again it's um everyone responding uh, to these things in a different way you know there are women who are taking those experiences and they keep them in themselves and they actually operate their life on uh based on what um has happened and like not letting people in or there are women who actually take what has happened and they heal themselves and they actually choose that anything from that experience will not affect their present and their future so their response of women are very very different you know but it, it all depends you know on what mind state they're in what is available to them at the moment but i can tell you the worst thing that you can do with a woman like that is actually to force her or um you know push her to do any work because like as far as I'm concerned, that no one's broken, right? No one's broken. No one needs fixing. We are sometimes just like I, I love using this example. We are like <clears throat> uh, a radio, you know, we are like a radio. And sometimes our frequency is a little bit crackly. So when this frequency is a little bit crackly, it doesn't mean that you have to go and fix the radio. It just means that you have to attune the frequency. Does this make sense? And, and you know, you can only do that when you really want to. Because no one can, like, force you, like, oh, do this for me, do this for me. It's like there will be lots of res resentment. There will be lots of resistance. The, the transformation will not take place. The transformation, in fact, will be like almost not possible. You know, if somebody doesn't want to heal, you cannot force them. But what you can do, you can be a very supportive uh, person. You can be very supportive man 
who actually can encourage and and um, create a safe space for a woman actually open up her heart and allow her emotions out without having any judgment without having any um, you know fear of holding her emotions because this is another thing you're like us women we test you guys all the time right we test you and it's like we do that most of the time without even knowing that we're doing that and it's like every time when it's like there is like all these wild emotions like oh my god you know what it's like oh let's see if he can handle this right <laughs> and and all it is you have to be deeply rooted into your masculine energy like you know like a deep rooted tree just having the your your um roots deeply in the ground and you know and she's like this feminine storm she would come and she would bend you but will not break you and this is where you know that when she's certain that she cannot break you that you don't subscribe to her wildness and you can handle her she'll be like oh, i can relax now i can let go i can allow him you know i can surrender to his masculine presence to hold my orgasm right here but that takes a lot of work, right? Which is fun, by the way. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> and the song goes, what does not kill you makes you stronger. Sex, uh, <laughs> sex, you know. Thanks a ton for answering my three questions, Eugenia. Time for me to spread my wings and fly to dreamland. Now, I'm glad um, I've asked to join. Okay, I'm glad. Um, ask me okay so take care and stay safe thank you so much for joining me today thank you so much for staying up and thank you so much for your questions i'm really really grateful for all of you being here and i'm gonna send you an email uh so if you have any more questions to coming up so please do ask them otherwise please book a call if you would love to discover what gets in the way of you becoming a fantastic incredible lover okay lots of love to you bye for now